Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I'm Ray Taholsky from Avon, Minnesota, and I have two passions. One is wood turning and the other is fishing. So I've combined both of my passions into one activity. Uh, I invented this uh, pedal lathe a number of years ago. Uh, so I and this accomplishes several things. One, I get my exercise. And uh, two, I get my fishing lures. So uh, I can sit here and pedal and get my lures. I replicate most of the old lures that you'd probably find in Grandpa's tackle box or great grandpa. The history of fishing is, is quite interesting. The lures and the fishing, that how we do it today, has only been in existence less than 100 years. And uh, I'm going to uh, probably start by replicating the old Bassarino. And this lure was first made in 1916. So every time I do one blank, I'll get two lures. And I give these lures to kids to get them interested in fishing. And an average year will give away about 15, 1600. We put these lures in a little kit form. And in each kit, we have the lure, the hooks, the hardware, and the eyes. And the finished product looks like this. It's the same lure, and it's the same colors that the original Bassarino were made. A gentleman by the name of James Hedden was sitting on the riverbank about 1915 and had a jackknife and a twig and he was whittling it and waiting for a friend of his. His friend came up and he threw the whittled twig in the river and a fish came up and grabbed the twig and it looked very similar to, the, to his Bassarino. So he went back and he started manufacturing the wooden Bassarinos and they're an excellent bait for bass. The Bassarinos were actually made in different sizes and I have here a larger one, but this one was actually made in 1916 and it was one of the first and the reason I know the date on it is because of the glass eyes. And they only put the glass eyes in in two or three years, then they just painted the eyes on. Appearance, as I say, this one is quite old. This is another one, and it looks a lot older, but in fact, it was made back in the 30s because of the painted eyes and the way it was made. So the appearance isn't necessarily how you would date one. You date them by the hardware, the eyes, and the color. There was probably more Bassarinos made and sold than any other lure ever made to this date. And the most popular was the red and whites. For some reason, red and white lures have always been one of the most popular. A lot of the lures that I replicate, and even though they may look like the old lures, I don't paint. I do paint some, but a lot of them that, that I make, I leave natural. Here is a jitterbug that I made. It's a replica. It was made in the 30s by a gentleman by the name of Fred Abagast. And the reason I don't paint mine is because the natural wood in the water looks more like a real fish or a minnow. And I've always felt, and this is not an original thought, that the lures that are sold today are designed more to catch the fishermen than they are the fish. They look real pretty, but I don't think they catch any more fish than the old lures that were made 75 to 100 years ago. I personally believe that action of lures are what catches more fish than the color. I think color is somewhat important, but the action is so much more important than the color. And that's why most of my, my wooden lures I don't finish. There was a gentleman called Julia Burl, and he probably manufactured the very first 
for sale fishing lure. And actually it was a fishing spoon. And he manufactured it by taking one of his wife's spoons from the table, cutting the handle off and uh, painting it, drilling a couple holes in the end and making the very first spoon. All of our spoons today derived from this tablespoon that Julia Burrow made. That is the daredevils that we know today derived from it or the five diamonds that most people fish with. I'd like to take a few minutes now if uh, you bear with me and actually make one of the spoon lures. Okay, well here's a spoon that uh, you don't want to invite me to your house for dinner because you might lose a few spoons now and then. But uh, I, uh, I'll go ahead and make one of the spoon lures and basically all you'll, you need to do is take a chisel, cold chisel, and now I'm going to walk over here and I drilled two holes. The holes I put in plus the end that I cut off is fairly sharp. You sure don't want anything sharp because it'll cut your line. So I use a powder paint which is sort of like baked on porcelain. And to use it, you put a little heat on your spoon. If you get too much, it'll bubble. If you don't get enough, it won't stick. And then I spread the powder paint on the spoon. This is hot and I'm gonna let it cool just a minute. And you'll start it on your lure, put your hook on it. And basically the split ring pliers just open the split ring. And you're ready to go fishing. Any lure can catch a fish. And I, I give a little illustration here this is nothing more than a, a bottle cap. You can take a house key, put a slight bend in it, and it swims like the daredevil. This is the handle of the spoon. And of course, I, I, we made and I showed you the spoon. Uh, this lure here is uh, made out of a piece of hand bone. And again, the shape is like the daredevil, swims like the daredevil. The twig is actually a replica of the very first bassarino that James Hedden carved and threw in the river and uh, uh, attracted the bass. So anything can catch fish if you present it right and you don't need to spend a ton of money at your big sporting goods stores to have successful fishing. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.